Hey guys, here I am again, Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Pair, and happy Sunday! And you guys might know by now that on Sundays, I generally work until about noon, and the rest of the day belongs to me, baby. I do what I want the rest of the day. Uh, so, uh, what I did today so far was, um, this is the A-Track section out of a 1970 Barracuda AM A-Track unit. It's your typical blackface, uh, thumb wheel unit, uh, and, um... It's much easier to work on the A-Track section if you just completely remove it. So I made these little feet for it so I can, when I'm finished working on it, I can actually play it and the belt and capstan doesn't rub against the desk and stuff like that. So uh, I'm just here to, uh, the last thing I did on this, well, uh, the head mount on this thing uh, was actually cracked. It's the first time I've seen it on this type of units. Um, I'm used to repairing the plastic head mounts on cheaper units. On this one, the, the head mount is actually cast steel, and because there's a stiff spring in there uh, to adjust the, uh, the the head azimuth, uh, that strong spring eventually caused that thin, the, the thinner part of this uh, of this cast peel of, the, of this of this cast bracket to crack. And so I did uh, my usual repair. On, on this except that since this is not a plastic bracket and since and since the sides are so thin I wasn't able to embed the, the the wire that I used to tie it back together and then I and then I solder it together then I put epoxy over the whole thing um, I was not able to cut a groove into this so that the wire doesn't take up more space and so uh, in addition to fixing the head I also had to do some filing on the chassis itself because there's about an extra millimeter of width now on this uh, on this head mount bracket and uh, that that little bitty extra bit of width would not clear the hole in the chassis so I had to file out the chassis a little bit too so uh, then I recap the preamp and I replaced the motor with my adjustable speed motor uh, almost all the motors in these old Chrysler units are pretty well shot uh, e even if they still turn they're usually slow and, uh, and they can be very noisy too from uh, from shot bearings. So uh, I have not adjusted the speed yet. Uh, I've made sure everything else works. I've made sure the preamp works now. Um, I've made sure that the, uh, now on this particular unit, not on most of them, but on this particular unit, um, the, 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 there's a solenoid that activates when you put a tape in. Uh, for instance, okay, I'm gonna pretend to slide my tape in, which will push this solenoid back and then it locks in place and then you know, of course you release the power and it unlocks so now I gotta reset my test receiver because the turn on surge uh, puts it into overload condition okay now we're going to uh, first I'm going to make sure that uh, this is the the wire for the AM radio we're gonna make sure that that wire I fixed the AM radio part yesterday we're gonna make sure that this uh, that this wire sends the AM radio through both speakers Okay, and why is not why is it not doing that? It's got to be something I'm doing wrong. It's, it's always something I'm doing wrong. Okay, yeah, there, I don't have my speakers turned on the receiver. Okay, now we'll try it. Okay, just make sure that we get a beep. And we'll make sure that it's going to both speakers. Just crank it up a bit. Okay, now we got our AM radio through both speakers. I'm going to turn it back down get this irritating tone out of the way. Oh, make sure that, that it cuts off too when a tape is inserted, which activates the switch. Okay, so we know that the radio part is, is passing properly, so we can stop worrying about that for the moment. Now we can go ahead and pop a tape in. And uh, now this, this new motor here, uh, I also had to build a speed control board for it. It's, um, oh, it's about 16 parts that I squeeze onto this little bitty tiny circuit board. Uh, and that's the same board as you can see here. And because this board is supposed to mount to uh, to metal to dissipate the heat, um, I had to temporarily attach uh, a heat sink to this thing so it doesn't burn up while I'm testing it. So I think now we're finally ready to test. I have not yet adjusted the speed. I'm not even sure the motor works yet. So let's let's go ahead and try. Let's turn our receiver down so it doesn't kick out on overload when we insert the tape. Insert our tape. Okay, now our tape is running. Okay, well it's working. Just need to adjust the speed. So let's adjust the speed. But let's change tracks first. Yeah, blank spot there. 
Got both speakers? Well, look at that. We do. I was lonely, couldn't sleep at night. So I wished for you with all my mind. You're the one upon the beach. Okay. No cross talk between tracks. That's good. Wait for the next song to start. There we are. Alrighty. Pull in the plunger, release the tape so you can pull it out, and that takes care of that. So, uh, that is the extent of my work for today. It is, uh, it's it's 12.30 Sunday afternoon, just after lunch, and so I am out of here for the rest of the day. I'm going to be cuddling up with a cat, eating everything in sight, and lapsing in and out of consciousness in front of the TV. Uh, so... Uh, Please wish me a nice, happy, relaxing Sunday, and I wish you guys the same. Uh, this, incidentally, comes from Doug in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's out of a 1970 uh, Challenger AMA track unit uh, that he wanted to repair to original stock, so that's why we're going through all this. Uh, I just need to find a place to mount the uh, speed control board inside the cabinet, and then we're, we're good to go. So, uh, Thanks so much for watching and listening, and thank you, Doug, for your business from Nevada, and we'll see you guys next time. Happy Sunday again.